that we must discuss this week a matter of vital importance to the future of our citizens and their children. We must have an honest and critical discussion about FPL's plan to expand the nuclear plant at Turkey Point. When I say that we must have a discussion, I mean that in the true sense. We need our residents to be informed. But more important, we need our residents to speak up and make their voices heard to the federal regulators and trust with our safety. The federal government will be hosting public meetings on FPL plans for expansion next week. And at the end of the press conference, we will provide the information for these meetings uh, so the people are able to attend and, of course, uh, write letters and emails. In, in these meetings, we must make our concerns clear, and there are many. FPL is planning to construct two additional nuclear reactors only 25 miles south of the city of Miami. This will also include the construction of miles and miles of colossal 105-foot transmission line through uh, urban and residential neighborhoods in Miami-Dade County. In the case of the city of Miami, uh, it will go through, according to their plan, uh, US-1 um, crossing the city of Miami uh, from west to east uh, through uh, Coconut Grove, Golden Pines, uh, uh, Shenandoah, also the roads, uh, Brickell, Overtown, and downtown Miami. This plan should not be approved as proposed. And there are several reasons. Uh, one of the reasons that it will shrink the supply and quality of our fresh water. And this is a conversation that has never happened in terms of consumption. It does not realistically account for sea level rise or storm uh, surge, which is a safety uh, concern. And especially the transmission line towers will be 10 stories tall and will not be built to Florida hurricane safety standards. The city of Miami is in court as we speak because we are demanding on behalf of the residents that uh, those lines uh, should be on the ground. And what this means is that these towers could topple over the metro rail businesses and homes in uh, a storm. Uh, several cities have joined this conversation. Uh, today we have the mayors of two of the cities that have been really active in uh, trying to modify or fight uh, the expansion. And it is uh, my honor to introduce uh, the mayor of the village of Pinecrest, Mayor Cindy Lerner. Sure, you can introduce me. Okay. Um, we've been uh, Mayor Stoddard and Mayor Regalado, and I have been working very closely, collaboratively, and intensively for six years now on this issue. So there's a tremendous amount of uh, scientific information, uh, infrastructure information that we've brought to bear not all of which is, um, are we capable of providing you or our shared constituents, indeed all of Miami-Dade County today. I would first like to yield to uh, Mayor Stoddard to set that table with a lot of those issues and then I will follow up Mayor Stoddard. Thank you, I just wanna thank uh, Mayor Regalado and his staff for their tireless uh, pursuit of this issue. 
and for being a great partner with uh, the village of Pinecrest and the city of South Miami in trying to look after the entire county. And sometimes this has been portrayed in the press as an issue for the municipalities on the east side of Miami-Dade County. And that's incorrect because the issues that are affecting us affect everybody. And they are a combination of economic issues, safety issues, environmental issues, um, and I'm going to go through them for you at this time fairly briefly, and if there's any questions at the end, I'd be happy to take those. So let's first look at the economics. In 2010, the city of South Miami hired the chair of economics at the University of Miami to conduct an economic analysis of the, what the transmission lines would do if built above ground along the US-1 corridor. And uh, Dr. Weisskopf at that time found it would take $25 million a year out of our economy. Now that was 2010 real estate values run forward to this, this year's values. And that's $35 million a year in perpetuity. And that would be more than enough to pay for undergrounding of the lines. So FPL is trying to save money for themselves, but push the costs onto us. Now, this is a countywide issue because this is the county's tax base. The entire county bears this cost. 80% of all property taxes, as you know, go to the school board and to Miami-Dade County. So this is a whole county issue. This is not east side versus west side, as it's sometimes been portrayed. Um, as Mayor Regalado mentioned, um, FPL is not planning for sea level rise. Their proposal for the new nuclear plants is uh, taking into account one foot of sea level rise. Well, Pete Harlem over at FIU has shown that with one foot of sea level rise, Turkey Point becomes an island. And the National Climate Assessment figures we're going to get a foot of sea level rise in somewhere between 35 and 45 years, and it's going to accelerate uh, quite precipitously after that. So FPL simply isn't being realistic about what's coming. So who's on the hook for these sunken costs? We're on the hook for it, because we ultimately have to bail out uh, the nuclear companies if their systems cease to work. This has happened with Crystal River now with Duke Power. So how much of our money is at risk? $24 billion. Once again, the risk and the burden gets pushed back onto the ratepayers and the taxpayers. Um, FPL's nuclear plants, their existing plant and the two new ones they want to build pose serious evacuation problems. So one of the things you have to produce when you're planning a nuclear plant is an evacuation study. Well, they fudged it, and they fudged it very badly. And what they did was they made the assumption that nobody north of Coral Reef Drive, that's southwest 152nd Street, nobody north of Coral Reef Drive would evacuate in the event of a radiation release. Now, I'll ask all of you, if you got the word that there was a radiation cloud coming towards your house and you lived north of Coral Reef Drive, would you get out? <laughs> I don't know anybody who said no to that question. If people north of Coral Reef Drive bail, the entire peninsula gridlocks. And I got a civil contractor, civil defense contractor, to model this. And they showed it happens instantly. And the county says, well, we can improvise. Well, they can only improvise within the, within the confines of their model, and their model is not realistic. Um, the mayors have mentioned the issues concerning our water supply. We already have a bad situation in Southeast Dade because of Turkey Point 3 and 4. The cooling canals are hypersaline. That dense saline water sinks, it's displacing the fresh water from the aquifer, and it's moving inland. The canals are overheating. There's been the whole problem of FPL trying to poison the canals to kill the cyanobacterial bloom, um, pumping more and more fresh water in there that's supposed to be restoring the Everglades. So F what FPL's solution has been is to buy, try to bypass the local regulatory agencies to get permission from Tallahassee to pump unlimited amounts of fresh water into these canals which is going to really impair our abilities to restore the Southeast Everglades and Biscayne Bay. FPL is failing in the fight against climate change. By proposing to spend $24 billion building nuclear power, they're missing the opportunity to do solar. They could do five times more solar power, 10 times sooner with that same money, and they're missing that opportunity. Somehow or other, FPL successfully convinced the Public Services Commission that energy conservation doesn't work in Florida. Well, I know this is wrong uh, because um, in two years of home improvement projects, I was able to cut my electric bill in half. So I know it can be done. 
And what if everybody did what I did? Well, um, for some reason, the Public Services Commission accepted FPL's nonsense and eliminated the state's energy conservation programs. As you probably know, FPL is against residential solar. There was a nice piece on WLRN yesterday. FPL wouldn't even send somebody to participate. So once again, I know that solar works because I installed solar panels on my house last year and eliminated my electric bill. Um, sometimes FPL says uh, the sun doesn't shine at night. Uh, but very soon, I can install Tesla home battery packs on my house, and my solar power will be available to me at night. In fact, even with the batteries, it'll still be three times cheaper than power from the new nuclear plants that FPL is planning to put in the south end of our county. So these are some of the issues. Uh, I think FPL has, has put themselves securely on the wrong side of every single one of them. And I'm really hoping that the residents of the county come out, um, speak at these public meetings, and say, you know, we've had enough. We want people to be taking care of our interests instead of taking care of their business at our expense. So with that, I'll, I'll pass things over to uh, Mayor Lerner. Thank you very much. They put together the statutory framework to recover early cost recovery. And that is FPL permitted to dip into all of their ratepayers' pockets yearly. At this point, uh, ad, infin ad infinitum, um, as an additional subsidy, which they've used to do the uprates at Turkey Point, to fight the battles that we're all fighting. So some of our taxpayers are paying them as ratepayers and paying um, us as ta taxpayers to fight this battle. We continue to fight that battle, and our statement to both the legislature and to the Public Service Commission is, every year when you redetermine that subsidy, that extra early cost recovery, you are required to do a needs assessment. They have failed miserably every year to do a thorough needs assessment on whether or not we should still contemplate building two new nuclear power plants at ground zero, knowing what is coming from the science and the data and the reports that are all accepted state of the environmental challenges that we place. Were they to do that, they would look much more carefully at the economic risks and at the environmental risks that this proposed placement of new, two new nuclear power plants. Were they to do that, they would consider what happened in Fukushima in 2011, and they would consider that we are looking at a population base within 50 miles of the nuclear um, power plants of two and a half million people who in their right mind would put new, new nuclear power plants at sea level, Rye, at sea level, at risk of storm surge, with no evacuation plan for two and a half million people. Nobody in their right mind would do that, and that is why a thorough determination of need has not been done. Our concern and the reason for coming forward today is because the Nuclear Regulatory Commission must now decide whether to grant the license in the placement, which is the pre preferred placement for um, FPL, and which is the, the least preferable, most risky uh, placement that anybody could conceive of in the state of Florida. It is